it wasn't long ago that Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg was chastising the federal government on issues of privacy. Now, his company, Facebook, is facing a huge backlash over whether it practices what it preaches when it comes to online privacy and transparency. It's a place Facebook has been before. The latest fear started this weekend when three researchers, including a Facebook data scientist, published a paper in the official journal of the National Academy of Sciences. The paper's authors say their research indicates that the number of positive or negative posts in a person's Facebook news feed may actually have an impact on their behavior. But in obtaining that finding, the researchers didn't explicitly inform the nearly 700,000 English language Facebook users that they studied that they were conducting a massive psychological experiment back in January of last year. They also neglected to mention that to, to some users that some of their news feeds were being carefully selected to display slightly more positive or slightly more negative posts. The backlash has been swift, first over whether this was even legal, and second, even if Facebook's privacy policy indemnifies the company legally, is this kind of research ethical? The Read Report reached out to Facebook and the company said in part, this research was conducted for a single week in 2012, and none of the data used was associated with a specific person's Facebook account. A big part of this is understanding how people respond to different types of content, whether it's positive or negative in tone, news from friends, or information from pages they follow. We carefully consider what research we do and have a strong internal review process. There's no unnecessary collection of people's data in connection with these research initiatives, and all data is stored securely. Reed Albergati is a tech reporter with The Wall Street Journal, and Lauren DeLisa Coleman is a digital cultural trend analyst. And Reed, I'm going to start with you because that statement from Facebook sounds awfully like what the federal government said in the case of NSA spying uh, or NSA data collection, I should say, big data collection, which Mark Zuckerberg was extremely critical of. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, this is, um, I mean, it's, it's obviously a different thing. I mean, Facebook is always tweaking this algorithm that determines what you see in your news feed, essentially what, you, what appears in front of you when you go on Facebook. But what they did here that was different and that I think really triggered nerves is that they're actually trying to change people's emotions on Facebook. And I mean, that, that is a line that I think academics are now questioning, you know, should we have better guidelines about this? And the other difference is that instead of just doing this research internally, Facebook actually published it, you know, with Cornell, with other researchers at academic institutions that receive federal funding and have obligations about, you know, the ethical um, guidelines here in their research. So I think that is what is, what is really, stirred this debate. And Lauren, I mean, that I think is the difference, right? This wasn't just them looking at the, the um, sort of attitudes and sort of actions of their users and collecting the data. They were actually manipulating in some cases the content that people were seeing in their news feeds, even with a slight manipulation and then recording the result. Is that, is that something new? Have you ever heard of anything like that before? I mean, I think we all know, Joy, that technology companies such as Facebook have always been able to observe our data. But to be able to go in and not only manipulate it, but do a study around it, this is like entering it to a whole another level. I think that a lot of legal experts are telling us that it is legal. Apparently, when you check that little terms of service box um, agreement that you buy into this and many other things. But I think the real question, as we're talking about now, is, is it ethical? Should companies like Facebook really be taking this data, particularly without us knowing about it and being able to do all kinds of research around it. In addition, we have to all be able to look at how is this being worded? Are people like just giving away the keys to the kingdom without even really knowing, you know, what it is that they're doing? So as data becomes more and more of what we're calling the new oil, this is going to become a huge, huge conversation. Yeah, indeed. And I mean, the, uh, the Facebook privacy policy that Lauren just mentioned, it reads actually, we may use the information we receive about you for internal operations, including troubleshooting, data analysis, testing, research research and service improvement, it doesn't specifically say we may also add to that data and then study you. Uh, going back to you, um, Reed, Mark Zuckerberg's core criticism of the Obama administration, and this is in March when he did write this sort of open letter, he said essentially, he said this, he said, quote, the U.S. government should be the champion for the Internet, not a threat. They need to be much more transparent about what they're doing. Otherwise, people will believe the worst. Um, does it strike you as ironic that essentially the government in these big data operations was taking information from companies like Facebook? That's what they were subpoenaing. This information we're voluntarily giving to companies like Google, companies like Facebook. But now, if some of that data is not original, if it is actually manipulated, 
I don't know. I feel like we're in a real gray area where the data isn't even necessarily your data. It has been manipulated. Oh, well, I don't think it is your data. Whatever you put on Facebook, um, it, it basically becomes data belonging to Facebook. And actually, that's the core of Facebook's business. A lot of users don't realize this, but data gathering for use in targeted advertising is what pays the bills there and is what is growing that company. So certainly, I mean, users, users should know, and I think that's, that's a big um, part of this issue, is that people just, you know, they don't read those privacy policies. They aren't really aware of what they're turning over. And, you know, here, transparency is, a, is an interesting question because Facebook actually did publish this study publicly. So they obviously didn't think that there was a problem with it ethically. Um, but what's not really transparent, and the question that, we, that a lot of people are asking now, is what exactly was the internal process at Facebook? How did they decide whether this study should have happened or should not have happened? And how, how was that process carried out with the academic researchers as well at Cornell? Another yeah. big question. I wish we had more time. Um, thank you so much to Reed Albergati and Lauren Lisa Coleman. We just ran out of time. Thank you very much. Thank you.